The one good thing about growing old, of course, is the fact that you continue to meet interesting people. The sad side of it all, though, is that so many family and friends leave you behind. Now, one of the nicest and funniest men I knew was Michael Benteen. We first met back in the late 40s, and when last met him, just a few weeks before he died in November. He was a man of great wit and intelligence, and a man who'd gone through a lot. But even so, as you see now, he mirrored the love and affection his family showed him, and still managed to make me laugh. <laughs> but you feel yourself getting old. How do you feel about getting old, for a start? Well, I, there's a slight feeling of falling apart. That, yes. I think, is quite natural. I think it's quite natural. Yes. Do you feel there are any virtues in growing old? We've all got to grow old, but what compensations are there? I think acceptance of the fact there's not a fat lot you can do with it, is <laughs> the one virtue that I can think of. I think it's terribly important to, not to the act or age, I've never really grown up beyond a mental age of about ten, and I'm very happy with it. I, I don't want to be any older. Do you, do you find you compromise more, though, as you get older? I think you're much more compassionate. Yeah. You know, you don't want to go, no, that's fine, in the middle. You, you, you know, you're, yeah. you'd sort of, you'd settle for a f far less strenuous yeah. way of murdering whatever it is that you were <laughs> furious at the time. Now, Fitz dealt you some very severe blows. You've had five children and three of them are dead. Now, how do you manage to cope with that? You don't. All that grief, all that sense of loss, all that sense of deprivation, you're rent apart virtually, you're in bits. Uh, the only thing that helps you to cope with your bereavement is love, because love is greater than bereavement. Hmm. At the time, my only advice is howl it out of you. Get it out of you by any physical yeah. method you can think of. Fury, agony, what, whatever it is, the agony in the garden, it's not a not a bad description, mm. the agony at Gethsemane. Because that must have been that awful moment of doubt. Mm. I had that, I, I had that in my life. I went, oh, tell, us, tell us when. Well, uh, recently, due to uh, some mixture of things that they'd been giving me, mm. which wasn't their fault, something reacted with something else, something else, something else. And for four days, I had the raving abdabs. I don't mean, <laughs> I don't mean anything like that. I mean just total utter black despair. All the faith had gone, all everything had gone except love. Love was still there. And I was blubbing like a baby. I had to drink and drink and drink water. You talk about your kidneys too near your eyes. I was crying away like a baby. And with it, total loss of direction. A sudden feeling, what the hell is happening? And that must have been the same agony in a much more terrifying way that must have stricken Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Because after all, he had led his disciples uh, into this very perilous area where they were, they were being threatened with death. And there was this whole feeling that suddenly, was he right? Was it a genuine contact? Because while you feel that it's there, there's nothing on God's earth will shift you. There's nothing you're really afraid of. It's the old to be a pilgrim bit, you know. Yeah. But by golly Moses, I wouldn't go for that four days for anything. I really wouldn't go through it for anything. And I wouldn't wish my worst enemy through it. That, that's, that's, the, that's the darkness of the soul. God, it is a terrifying experience. And there, the only thing that helps you is the love of the people around you. And thank God I had that. And if you're lucky enough to feel that, and you and I have been lucky enough to feel that in our lives, not only with our wives, but also with our children, by God, that's something that you can't, you can't whack, as they would say, but also you can't buy it. You have to gain it, you have to win it, and by God, you're a lucky person if you do gain it. But to do it alone, no. You'd have to be one incredible soul for that, and that must have been what Jesus was able to withstand. That's why he could withstand the cross, presumably.